Okay, so today guys we're going to be starting on a bit of a, a bigger project, this is a 132nd scale, uh, the F16C, uh, but I'm not going to build up the one that's in the kit here, I'm going to go for one of the um, Barack versions, and I've got, I'll just get this lid off and I'll show you what we've got inside here. Okay, we'll take this in as well. Okay, I bought this second hand off someone, so uh, that's why it looks a little bit rubby and it has been open. But um, what we're going to go for is what's in this packet here. Now I bought these decals a while ago, um, and this is the guy we're going to go for, okay, the F16C Barack. Um, and the particular one I really like is the, the guy here with the skull and wings on the back. Um, you've probably seen quite a few of these being built up over the time, like you know, I've seen quite a few of them on YouTube and so on. But um, it's a fairly big project guys. There's going to be a fair bit of weathering. I've got the, the paints and everything for it. Uh, I've got the removed before flight um, uh, etch parts as well. And yeah, it's, it's a fairly big build guys. Um, we've got a bag full of goodies here as well. Um, these are just to get us to the right version. You know, just some little little resin parts and stuff like that. So it'd be a good thing to be able to show you working with resin as well. Um, this is apparently a very nice kit. I actually haven't built one of these yet, but from what I understand, it's a very nice kit. Um, just going by the instructions, it's fairly detailed. There is a lot of work in it, uh, but. Yeah, it, it builds up to be a very nice, um, nice aircraft. Having looked on the internet and seen other people build it, it is a nice aircraft. So, so anyway, guys, I'm going to get started on this, and um, when I get to the cockpit stage, when it gets to a certain stage, I'll turn the camera back on. We'll have a look at the, uh, the cockpit. Okay, guys, so we've got our cockpit going, which is pretty well together there now. There was no problems putting it together. Uh, all I, all I've done is uh, just gone over and hand brushed the, the detail after I put the, that blue coat on there, that blue grey coat that goes inside the, the cockpit. Went over and just picked out all the details with um, with the point of a toothpick, just dipped in paint. Um, and then just give it a, a light wash just to sort of dirty it up a little bit. And done a little bit of dry brushing here and there but nothing too major. Um, also put the decals in there as well. Uh, the decals are very tiny and you don't really notice them that much but they do they do sort of bring it to life once they're on there you can see them and they do bring it to life a little bit uh, to get the noise in the background i've got my exhaust fan going it's a bit fumey i was just spraying some metalizers around here so but uh, yeah no problems putting the cockpit together guys uh, take your time painting details and things like that because um, a good a good cockpit paint will actually like bring that aircraft to life like, especially if you're going to have the hatches out the, the canopy open so you can see inside um, if, if you've got a cockpit that's not painted properly or a little bit rough or just a little bit underdone, it just yeah, it just can ruin the whole look of the aircraft. But if you do a good job, it has the opposite effect. You can actually bring the whole thing to life for you. So anyway, guys, um, I'll carry on and we'll start getting our fuse lines together, get our cockpit into place, and I'll turn the camera back on then. Okay guys, so we're up to the stage, we've got um, the bottom and the top of the fuselage sort of together and all the innards have been put in there. Now, this is by no means a Tamiya kit, um, there is a few fit problems with, with getting the internals in there, um, but a bit of sanding and filing. Um, the other thing is they don't sort of line up and fill in the gaps, you have, I have to put a bit of plastic card back down in there to, to stop the, the light and that coming through and make it look a bit more real. Uh, cockpits come up fairly good. Uh, the machine gun, again, not the greatest fit. Um, there's a few C marks you have to get rid of, but um, you know, it, it, it's like I say, it's no Tamiya kit, but it's still not a really problematic kit either. It's not that hard to sort of fix up the little bits and pieces. I say a bit of plastic card, just be careful when you're putting it in there. Um, putting in the nose here, like our intake. That was a, a bit of a drama. I had to do a little bit of sanding and, and rescribing down on here because it just it, there was just no way it was going to fit correctly. Um, it was a little bit of a fiddle to get it in there, so I had to glue one side down, wait for that to set, then push the other side down, glue that, and wait for that to set. Otherwise, it would all sort of spring open on me. Um, it's just the contours that, that are in there that don't line up. Um, but a little bit of filing and sanding helped it a, a fair bit. But um, generally, I'm, I'm fairly happy with the build so far. Uh, a few bits and pieces that um, I would probably go back and do a little bit different, but um, no, generally it's, it's not too bad, guys. Like I say, it's no Tamiya kit, but it's 
it's not a real problematic kit either so far. Um, but I'll turn the camera back on um, when there's any points I get to that are either problematic or uh, things that I think I should show you guys. But the next part of the process now is putting the fuselage together, getting our cockpit in, things like that, and then I'll start on the wings and so on. Um, all the smaller parts, like the little tiny small details, I'm leaving off at this stage. Um, and all I do is on the instructions where I've left them off, I'm putting a red dot so that when I go back later I can see that easy enough where the red dots are. That means there's a part there that has to go on there later on. Um, but yeah, generally guys, that's, that's the stage we're up to. And uh, I'll turn the camera back on when, um, when I think you need to see some more. Okay guys, so the body's pretty much together. I've got the wings on there. As you can see, I've used a little bit of um, a little bit of fluid around here, a little bit of filler around the wing joints there. They're not too bad, but um, yeah, just there's a, there's a small gap there. Uh, when you, you sit them right, so that at the right angle, that, that leaves a little bit of a gap there. Um, probably the the main problems I had is putting the resin parts in um, up around the nose here. I had to cut some pieces out, put the resin parts in. They weren't a really good match, so. I mean that happens with resin parts, you know, you're going to have a, a few dramas getting them to fit and things like that and a bit of sanding and stuff. Um, around here where the machine gun, because you've got the internals in here with your your uh, ammo barrel and, and the feed and you've actually got the chain gun in there as well. Um, getting these to fit on the actual covers was a little bit of a drama. Um, I, I was thinking about having it open but there's not enough detail in there and I really didn't want to go through having to fit all the detail in this because I've got the Tamiya kit there as well um, and I've got some add-ons for that so when I do the next one I'm going to have it opened up and have all that detail displayed um, so that was a bit of a drama there was a little bit of you know this is where dry fitting comes in guys make sure you dry fit everything um, on the tail up here then again the resin part you had to cut this off short uh, and there's no actual line that you have to cut it off at you sort of have to you know put the two together and, and guess roughly where it is leave yourself a little bit of leeway um, it's better to do a bit of filing than having to cut too much off and then you've got to try and refill it um, so the the, the uh, rivet lines don't match up so i've sanded all those back off i'll put a bit of filler in there i'll sand the filler back i'll re-rivet it i've got a little bit of a riveting tool there i'll do that with um, everything else seemed to fit fairly well the two fuselage hulls went to work together nice the cockpit wasn't a drama to put in there it all went in fairly good uh, all the landing gear underneath all went in quite nicely so far um, but yeah so it's 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 not a, a terrible kit but um, I mean there are fit issues with it but if you've done a bit of modeling it, it, it won't be too much of a drama for you it's just a little bit of make sure you test fit everything dry fit everything first a little bit of filing sanding but um, yeah, not too many dramas so far. So I'm going to continue on with this now, guys. I'm going to put the the uh, the jet. We'll be going into the back of it here. Um, I've left off all the smaller details, and anywhere I've left details off, I'll put a red dot on the pages. So when I go back, I can see easy enough the, the bits that I've got to fit afterwards. Uh, I'll probably put those smaller parts on just before we start painting. Uh, clear parts obviously will go on after the painting. Um, but yeah, so far, guys, it's not a bad kit at all. Um, it certainly looks like the part so far, it's coming together nicely. And uh, I'll turn the video back on as we progress through. Okay, so the kit's pretty much together and we're up to doing the painting stage now. And all I'm doing at the moment is doing some pre-shading. Um, now the pre-shading is just um, thinning your paints down so they're fairly thin. Uh, put your airbrush on a low pressure. Uh, you can probably hear my airbrush ticking away in the background there um, and just do fine mist sprays over all your panel lines and and the rivet lines if you can see here I'll just pan in for you a little bit so you can get a bit better idea what we're up to here you can see there we've got um, the rivet lines and the panel lines I've, I've sort of gone over them now you don't have to do it thick okay it's just all it is is just light air brushes just darken them up a little bit so what happens is when you put the top coat over um, you lay it down thin and the panel lines are going to show through a little bit now some people don't like this technique some people overdo it some people underdo it it's it depends on the sort of look you're after and I know the sort of look I want with this this aircraft is going to be fairly well used 
a little bit weathered up so I want the panel lines to show through a little bit and I actually don't mind the look of the pre-shading um, I do do post shading sometimes as well it, it's it's personal taste but this is the way you do the pre-shading the post shading I normally do with pastels after I've painted the aircraft I get a, a stiff brush and I'll start sort of going over with pastels just dry pastels over all the panel lines and stuff and that'll do your, your post shading um, but like I say it's it's not this is not hard to do you don't have to be overly accurate okay just sort of aim it at generally the area that you're trying to shade hopefully you can see this right on the camera uh, no you can't because I'm at a shot there I'll bring it up here so you can see it okay and these, these are just some square panels that I'm, I'm going around here at the moment okay and like I say it's not I'm not making them overly dark um, I'm just putting like a light sort of a coat on it and it's not like I say you don't have to get this spot on guys just just so long as you roughly follow your panel lines and rivet lines and the F-16 is a beautiful aircraft for doing this on because there's so many rivet and panel lines and this will really show through on the, the end job and it'll look really nice so anyway what I'm going to do guys as you can see I'm not staying right on the lines keep the airbrush fairly tight but you don't want to be going too far away from the lines but it doesn't matter if you're a little bit you know a little bit rough as you see there guys that's not you know I'm not dead on the lines um, but that's that's the sort of look we're after and I'm going to go over the whole aircraft with this bottom and top um, I'm going to do the same I've got a main fuel tank underneath I've left off the rest of the weapon systems I want it to be a fairly clean aircraft like it's it's just come back um, with one extra fuel tank and all the arm limits are gone off the thing um, so yeah guys I'll keep going with this I'll turn the camera on when we start putting the colour over the top okay so the point we're up to now guys I'll put the underbelly coat on there uh, I don't want to pick it up at the moment because it might be still a little bit wet underneath so I just want to sort of show you what I'm doing on top here I'm using um, this stuff here this the masking putty from Meg uh, you, you can use well, the same stuff as pans of putty uh, there's a few different brands of it around but um, that's just the one I happen to have it's brilliant stuff for this sort of thing like doing the hard camo well it's actually not hard camo but it's um, you know that soft not not a soft camo not a hard camo it's that mid mid range sort of thing it's not um it's not dead straight lines and it's not sort of faded or anything like that so it's it's brilliant for doing what i'm doing here and what you do to to do get that effect is leave it fairly well lumped up like that is there at the moment so when you spray it down it's not a hard effect um, if you want to get a hard effect you can do it with this stuff just flatten it out a lot more and you can get that hard line effect um, I'm not sure if you can see on the blue, it's probably not showing up on this camera because it's actually night time here at the moment. But um, where I put the blue down, you can still see there's grey, like the, um, the the panel lines and the grey underneath. Um, that's the effect I'm looking for where it's the panel lines that I'd, I'd done in the black, as you can see here. I haven't covered them over completely. Um, if I cover them over completely, I can still do them in uh, post shade. What I'll do... Uh, the wing on the other side here might show up a little bit better because it's um, I just got to try and get it in the camera there if you can see that you can see that a little bit better there because I haven't um, haven't put the other coat over that yet but you can see that fairly well there where you can still see that black underneath and that's the effect I'm looking for um, up here it's just glossy at the moment because it's still a little bit wet so once that, once that dries down I can already see on the top here where it's dried down you can see the, the dark lines coming underneath there um, this up here was a little bit heavy and I've actually covered that over so what I'm going to do is post shade that um, with the like I was saying the pastels before um, very lightly just with a, a dark sort of pastel I'll mix a bit of uh, probably black and a little bit of grey fairly dark colour and just really lightly just brush over those panel lines just to match them with the stuff the, the rest of the stuff now all I've done to do the camo pattern, I've put down the lightest colour first which is that light khaki green looking colour that they have and um, the next one is going to be the light sand colour sort of like a pinky sandy looking colour, this this guy here okay, and I'll put that down next and um, 
but what I'll do, I'll, I'll camo over the, the green that's got to stay there. Then I'll spray that on roughly where it's got to be. And then the dark brown will be the last one, which is this guy here. Okay. Um, so that'll be the last one to go on there. Once I put that on there, that, that'll be finished. Then I'll let that dry. I'll put a, a clear coat over it, some future over it, because I want to get the decals to sit down really nice and tight. Um, when you put the decals on these, you want it to sink into all those rivets um, to get them to sink down really well. I'll be putting a bit of future on there uh, to seal it, and I'll put the decals on there with, with decaling solution to make them sink right into all those rivet holes. Um, once I've done that, then, then we'll start going over and doing a little bit of weathering to the aircraft. We'll paint all the stuff, like the, the missiles and different things, and we'll paint the wheels underneath there. I've already done white up in the wheel bays, and I've got them stuffed up with a um, little bit of foam at the moment to keep them protected as I paint over it. There's a few little delicate parts that I've, I've already sort of bumped and, and bent out of shape. Um, like one on the nose here, hopefully you'll be able to see that, this little guy here when I was taping around. I've sort of pushed that out of, out of square, so, but but once I've done all the painting, I'll be able to push that back into line and um, hopefully it won't break. If it breaks off, I'll just use clear white glue and um, that, that'll that'll be fine. I can just hand paint back over that. But um, so far, guys, it's coming up really nice. Once I get all these coats in, I'll turn the camera back in and I'll show you the coats with the future over it and I'll show you a little bit of the, uh, the decaling work on there as well. Okay guys, uh, I'll see you at that point. Okay guys, so we're pretty much finished with the paintwork now. And um, as you can see, the, the, the colours are beautiful. I'm using the uh, the MIG MO range. Um, it's the Israeli fighter colours, so they should be a really nice match. Um, and you can see, well hopefully, I might, I'll just pan this camera in for you. So you can see what I'm about to talk about here. If you can see, the paintwork's fairly patchy. I've done that for a reason because I want this thing to be a little bit worn like you know desert weather conditions and stuff like that. I know most of these aircraft didn't get that worn but um, there were a few that they did when they were you know in operations and things like that they, they wear down fairly quick. So I want to have it fairly patchy I don't want to sort of go through like nice bright colours and then have to weather it down. Um, some of the paint I had to put on a little bit thicker than I, I was hoping to um, so it's covered up some of the pre-shading, so um, it's it's dulled it down a little bit. Uh, if you can see on, if I can get it into focus for you, on the end of this wing here, that piece there, that's the sort of look that, that generally I do with, with um, the pre-shading. But um, that's, yeah, I didn't want the whole aircraft to look like that, but I've left that piece there to, to show you guys. So when the thing is finished, that and plus, you know, a little bit up around here as well, uh, around this green. The green is a good colour because it was it, it's fairly transparent, so it was easy to do to get that sort of look. The 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 um the lighter brown, the fleshy looking colour was a bit harder, but then the dark brown was really hard. I had to sort of put it on a bit thicker to to get the look I was after. But um, I'll I'll do a little bit of post shading as well on the browner parts. Um, because otherwise it won't match with the way the light green is and it's just gonna, not going to match where the dark green is So when I get to that stage. So at the moment I'm at the, the point where I'm starting to put decals on everything. Uh, I've got our fuel tanks here, started to put decals on those. Uh, a couple of missiles, now these are still drying so if it looks a little bit, a little bit funny guys forgive it, it's just still drying the decals on that. Um, and the little side binders out the side here. Again, they're, they're only just drying, guys, so um, it, it looks a little bit bubbly looking, the, the decals on those. I'm, I'm thinking I might even take some of them decals off and use paint instead because they're just not sitting down very well and they just don't look realistic, like the metal decals and stuff like that. So, um, But once I've got um, all the decals on the rest of this, um, I'll get to going around and painting things like, I'll just pan back out for you, Things like painting the exhaust system up, the tyres, you know, just going around tidying everything up, the lights and things like that. Um, but yeah, I'll put the decals on, we'll put the camera back on and show you the decals. Um, then we'll go do like a pin wash and then a general fading wash and um, yeah, I'll put the camera back on at those stages, guys, so you can have a look and see what we're up to. Okay, so the stage we're up to, guys, is we've got the decals on there now 
and all I've done is put an overspray of the uh, future. Oh, I'll just grab the bottle just to make sure. You all know what I'm talking about this stuff here, the future. Um, it's a, the floor wax stuff. I'll just put a coat of that over the top. You can use, there's an Australian one too that we can get in Australia long life. Now, the only problem I found is that I use the Tamiya Penaline wash and if I use the Australian Johnson Clear one, it, it, the Penaline wash and when you put um, shellite over the top, it'll actually break through all that and get into the paint and, and knock it off. So what I've done is put a, a nice um, nice coat of the Future Clear over it and that does two things. What it does is it settles the decals down so that they look like part of the paintwork rather than just, you know, stickers stuck on afterwards. They settle it in, um, like give you that, rather than having to step down between the decal and the paint, it just gives you a nice sort of finish between the two. So when you spray it on, spray it on fairly thick around the decal so they look like they're settled into the paintwork. Um, and, and the second thing that it does, it gives you a nice protection coat. So when you go to do the weathering, what, what I'm going to do is use, I've just got a little cup here, and all I've done is mixed up some um, black oil paints and a little bit of the uh, Tamiya Pantalone wash. Okay, and I'm just going to use a fine brush and go over and just run over all the lines. And it's just like a pin wash. Uh, anyone's done models knows what a pin wash is. All you do is dip your brush in that, run it over the panel lines, all the rivet lines and things like that. Um, the paint will settle into those those divots. Then I'm going to go over it with um, probably a just an earbud, like one of these guys, um, dipped in shellite and just rub over it and just clean off the excess and um, leave the stuff that's in the divots behind. And that should give us a, a really nice defined look then over all the panel lines and stuff. Uh, the only step after, me, after that is to do a little bit of weathering. Uh, I'm just going to put a few little streaks you know, off the, the fuel tanks and things like that so it looks like it's been used and there's a few little streaks coming off those things. And um, after that, it'll, I'll just put a dull coat over it to dull the paint down. And I might go over some of these panel lines in a bit of a post shade uh, just with pastels, but I'll, I'll see how I feel about the finish once I've done the weathering with the, the, the um, pin wash and stuff like that I'm going to have to see how I go with that and if that looks okay I'll leave it but if not I'm going to go over it and um, put those pastel those, those post shades over all the panel lines and that. And I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to do that because at the moment it's too bright, it's too, um, it's too defined and stuff like that I didn't get the effect I really wanted with the paint um, it, it's okay in areas, but some areas are just the paint went on too thick, and there's just no definition there between the, the paints. Um, I've also got to do the the, um, the jet up here, and like put some metallics and burnt metal and stuff like that. But as I go through, I'll turn the camera on, and um, we'll go through it as I as I go through step by step. Okay, modelers, so uh, we're finally finished here, yeah, F16 and um, just a few things I've got to add is when I've done the um, the weathering all I've done was just use pastel powders and just weather down where these um, where the, the fuel tanks and stuff like that are went over the panel lines again just with um, pastels on a, a light brush and just went over the, the, the lines just to make them stand out a bit more and as you can see over here I'll just tip it over just to make sure you can see it. You see over there where the um, the fuel points are and stuff like that. I just made sure there was some nice streaks off those because um, it, uh, an aircraft that hasn't been washed, that's what happens is the um, the streaks come back off those. And uh, the flaps over here, they're always dirty. They always have a bit of bit of you know dust stream and stuff like that. It builds up and it turns black over time. Um, I know. This particular aircraft didn't get very dirty, but um, you know it, it's like I always say, it's a modeler's choice. It's it's artistic license, and I wanted to make it a little bit dirty, so it's been used and it hasn't had time to be washed and stuff like that. So it's artistic license, guys, and this is what I've ended up with. Um, what I'll do, I'll put up some still photos after this, so you can get a good idea what's going on. Um, one of the things I have to say is the canopy. Um, the canopy in this kit, you do get a tinted one, and I've, I've used a tinted one on the lower part here, but on the higher part, 
uh, what happens is I crack the canopy. Um, now once you crack a canopy, that's it. It's it's had it. You can't do anything with it. So I just use the um, the Tamiya just to tone it down. The Tamiya Clear smoke. Sprayed it underneath, and I put Future Clear over the top and back up underneath just to make it nice and glassy looking, so it's nice and cool. Um, the problem with that is down here, right on these edges, because I didn't didn't spray it on thick enough, so, so it was you know running and stuff like that. It's a bit smoky down on the sides here, um, but other than that, it, it, it came up quite nice, and it's not something you're going to notice. Like when you look at the aircraft overall, it's just a beautiful looking color scheme. It's something that's it's not going to catch your eye. Go, oh, that canopy is not quite right. You're going to look at the aircraft and go, oh, that's that's just beautiful. Okay, and it is. It's a beautiful aircraft. The color scheme is just fantastic. I don't think there's a better a better color scheme for the F-16. Um, I think this is probably the the best you, you're going to get. It's absolutely beautiful. I've put the um, the ladder on the front here. Uh, put all the um, removed before flight tags on it. I'm going to make a base up for it. The base is not going, to, not going to be anything special, guys. It's just going to be a flat base, like a, an aircraft landing strip, you know, like the, the the dull grey with a few strips and stuff on it, and um, just so like it's sitting there ready to, um, you know, just sort of parked up sort of thing. So it's not going to be anything special. So I'm not going to worry about doing a video about doing the base because it's going to be very, 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 very plain. Um, I'll turn it around a little bit more here for you to have a bit more of a look. Um, one of the things you have to be very careful of with this aircraft if you build it is your little antenna wings off here off the side and off the other wing off the, the tail wing here and off these tail planes um, they're very very delicate and uh, I made the mistake of putting them on too early and I had to keep handling the aircraft and I kept breaking the things off and it just drove me into insanity honestly all I done is made the um, the antennas off the wings here of stress sprue and painted them black for i only build models just for me you know something that i put on the shelf and go oh i love that thing and, and i put it up there um the other thing is with the wheelbase guys if you don't set them up right this thing is going to sit crooked okay and the first time I, I put it up uh, i'll put the wheelbase in i'll put the landing gear in exactly where they should go i put it up like this and it was just sloping down on one side and I, it, I mean not just a little bit it was sloping down really badly so just something when you put the landing gear on this thing tip it over when it's as dry and just have a look at it just make sure it is sitting nice and square because there's nothing worse and you've got a beautiful aircraft but landing gear is not quite right and you put it down and you look at it from the back and it's just sitting crooked it just absolutely ruins the whole thing no matter how beautiful the aircraft is if it's sitting down one side, there's something that just really sticks out, okay? Um, the tile wing here, where I put the, the tile antenna on, that's just a little bit of uh, stretch sprueing in. Um, but anyway, guys, that's about all I can tell you about it. I'll put some photos at the end of this video. Um, if there's anything you want to ask, put it in the comments below. Um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And um, I will see you in the next video. Thanks very much for watching, guys.